Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model game assets in Blender. This is part 6 and today we are going to model a neon sign. This is the finished model and as always I designed this so we can follow along very easily. First of all add a background reference image. By pressing Shift A go to image then background. I will provide the reference image in the description. Then add a plane to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, then Plane, and head into Edit Mode by pressing Tab. Select all vertices and then go to Merge Vertices and Collapse. Now take this single vertex and place it right here. Now by pressing E you can extrude this vertex. By selecting two vertices and right click merge vertices and at center you can combine these two. Now press A to select all the vertices here. Then press command B to bevel then press V to enable the vertex bevel. Move your mouse to set the radius and scroll your mouse wheel to set the number of segments. Select one of the vertices and press X to delete and choose vertex. Now select those two, press E to extrude and extrude them backwards a bit. Again bevel these vertices by pressing command B, then V and get into object mode by pressing the tab key. Now go to object and under Convert to, choose Curve from Mesh. In the Curve Data properties, under Geometry, you can give it some depth. By right-clicking on the object, you can enable sh Smooth Shading. If you want to adjust the shape of your of your frame, you can press Alt and Z to get into X-ray mode. And by doing so, you can select all the vertices, even if they lie directly behind each other. Now repeat these steps. First you can add a plane, by pressing Shift A go to Mesh then Plane. Press Tab to get to Edit Mode. Select all vertices, right click, Merge Vertices, Collapse. Place the vertex and then extrude it. Press Command B then V to bevel the hard edges. Go to Object, Convert, Curve from Mesh. Then give it some depth. Make sure to adjust the loose ends of your curves so they don't overlap. Repeat these steps two more times. 
ones for this blue frame here. And one last time for the letters. Right. Now we will model the iron frame in the background. So add a cube to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to mesh, then cube, and start scaling it down by pressing the S key. Move it behind the neon sign by pressing G to move it. Now you can duplicate this object by pressing Shift D. And move it around a bit. Duplicate this object again by pressing Shift D and rotate it 90 degrees. By pressing R to rotate, then 90, then Enter. Duplicate this object again, and our supporting frame is finished. Normally, these neon signs have a lot of cables and other electrical devices on them, but because this is a low poly game object or game asset, we have to think of something else. I decided to add a cylinder by pressing Shift A to mesh then cylinder. Rotated it around the Y axis by pressing R to rotate, then Y, then 90 and enter. And scaled it down by pressing the S key. This cylinder will be placed at the loose ends of our neon signs. To give the idea of containing some cables, okay. press right click, shade smooth. And here, the object data properties enable auto smooth. Now take this object and duplicate it by pressing Shift and D, and move it to all the other places that have open ends. Now duplicate this cylinder by pressing Shift D and by pressing S you can scale it down. Go to wireframe mode and place it around the end of the neon tube. We will use this object to cut a hole into the other cylinder. So place it inside. 
can now start duplicating this small cylinder by pressing Shift D and move it to all the other tube ends. Make sure that they don't overlap each other, but fit around the tube ends. Now shift select all these small cylinders by pressing shift and left click. And then press command and J to join them to one object. Now select all the bigger cylinders. And again, press Command J to join them into one object. Now select this object, and under Modifiers, add a Boolean modifier. Set it to Difference, and select these small cylinders as your difference object. In Modifiers, click Apply, and now you can delete this object here. As you can see, we now have some holes for the neon tubes to disappear into. Make sure all the tube ends reach into these holes. By getting into edit mode, press tab, select the vertices, then press G to move them. Right, the modeling part is over. Now we can go to shading. And if you want to, you can select these objects here and combine them into one by pressing Command and J. Now add a new material by pressing plus new. And because it is an iron frame, set the metallic value to 1 and give it a base color. Select this object and give it a black material too. Now create a new material for your neon tube by pressing plus new. And we don't need the BSDF shader. Instead, by pressing shift A, go to shader, then emission, add this emission shader. We want it to have a bit more strength. I figured a value around 20 is fine. And now you can choose a color for your emission.
Now select the next neon object and give it the same material. Now select the next object and under materials select your neon material and by pressing this small number here you have now a single user material where you can change the color. Repeat this for the letters too. And your neon sign is ready. Keep in mind for this effect, when using Eevee, you have to enable Bloom. Alright, now it's time for you to try out this tutorial and come up with some neon sign ideas. And if you have tried it, I would be glad if you showed me your work. And if you want to, you can send it to me and I will showcase it in a future video. As always, you can send me your work via Twitter or Instagram. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.